For any Xbox or PlayStation codes or cheap games on any platform, use the referral link in the description. It'll take you to G2A.com. Use the promo code CHEZ over there and you'll get yourself 3% cash back. For all No Identity merchandise, hats, hoodies and t-shirts, follow the link in the description down below to the No Identity Fan Fiber website. Hey guys, welcome to episode number 3 of the Napoli career mode series here on FIFA 17. Thank you for all of your transfer suggestions over episodes 1 and 2. Over 2,000 comments, so uh, as you might be able to probably guess, the shortlist is rather full right now. I have a number of players on it, and we will show you it in a moment. At present, we have a transfer budget of £53 million. However, we are in the knockout stages of the pre-season tournament. We have Arsenal, and on the other side of the fixture list, we have Adelaide United versus Bayer Leverkusen. Leverkusen, of course, Leverkusen, of course, we've already played uh, in this preseason and we drew nil-nil. So uh, Adelaide actually beat Manchester City at some point in preseason. So that's how they're able to uh, be where they are. So we'll have to wait and see if they can see off the challenge of Leverkusen and meet us in the final. Of course, we have to see off the challenge of Arsenal first as well. But as we mentioned in the opening couple of episodes... Not really sure where the side needs boosting more. At present, contemplating selling on the two goalkeeper, two spare goalkeepers and uh, bringing in another younger, primarily probably Italian uh, goalkeeper and contemplating bringing in a wing-back or maybe two as well, depending on finances and maybe, maybe a striker as well. But we're, we're not looking for a central midfielder. We are looking perhaps for a wide midfielder though, as in a winger more so than a right mid, considering we're playing in a 4-3-3. Although, you know, right mids can play at right wing, just as similarly as right wings can play at right mid. So these are the number of goalkeepers I have. I haven't put Gianluigi Donnarumma on the list because, well, everybody under the sun signs Gianluigi Donnarumma. And, I mean, Mattia Perrin is obviously a standout obvious signing as well, but... I think it might be nice to not sign Gianluigi Donnarumma, considering everyone signs him. So we got Perrin. Simone Scuffett was actually the go-to goalkeeper for FIFA 15, I think. It used to be, like, this year it's Gianluigi Donnarumma or, since his upgrade, Jordan Pickford. And a couple of years ago, it's Simone Scuffett. Last year, and probably still this year as well, actually, it's Albin Lafont as well. But he isn't on this list either. Uh, we have... No, I don't know how to pronounce this with the accent, accents, so I apologise. But uh, Bartlemy Dragowski, you'll, you'll have to forgive me for my pronunciation there. I'm not sure. I think actually he's only on loan at Fiorentina. Oh, no, he's recently arrived at Fiorentina. So we wouldn't be able to buy him now, but we could have a look at him in January. Marco Sportiello is on loan. He's the one that's on loan at Fiorentina from Atalanta. Only 24 years of age, though, and six foot four, So he's a good option. Again, we could... We'd have to wait until next season to look at him. But if we decide we want to spend the money elsewhere, we do have three goalkeepers at the club already. Plus, we might be able to get someone in via a youth scout with regards to a youth player. We may not even need to buy a goalkeeper at all. But Ederson was very popular in the comment section as well. Brazilian guy from Benfica. I don't know much about him. Alessio Cranio as well. I think he's currently on loan where he currently is at minute. He is on loan at Benevento from Cagliari. Uh, Alex Merritt or Mere, I, I don't know whether it's Merritt or Mere, whether the T is silent or not. He also is on loan at a Serie B side, at Ferrer, uh, Ferrara, sorry, uh, on loan from Udinese. And then someone from outside of the Italian leagues, Geronimo Rulli, is at Real Sociedad. Again, a young goalkeeper with great promise and pretty decent. I enjoy using him on, uh, on Ultimate Team, and he has had an upgrade throughout the course of this year. At wing-back, we have uh, Sylvan, I want to say Widmer, but I don't know. He's, is he Swiss? He's Swiss, so it might be Widmer, actually. I don't know. You'll have to confirm for me. 23 years of age. I don't like a number of these players. In fact, almost all of them are going to need to be scouted first. We've got Cristiano Pacini. We know he's decent from when we were doing the My Player series, which, of course, the series that this one has replaced. And we were at Betis in that My Player series. Davide Zappacosto is on the list as well, uh, as well as Davide Calabria, currently at AC Milan. Very young at 19. Stats don't look that good, but obviously 
we can train him. Um, Centre-back is interesting. I hadn't noticed, and you guys very rightly pointed out to me, that Maksimovic is actually on loan from Torino, not a permanent signing. I think in real life he's set to sign permanently at the end of this season, IRL, for about €17 million, Euro, or £17 million, pound, one of the two. But in this save right now, he's only on loan, so we could perhaps go back and sign him at the end of the season, or we could bring someone else in now to eventually take his place. At the minute, I've only got a couple of options here in... Uh, Daniele Rugani. Uh, we could also maybe look at Romagnoli, but I mean, Rugani and Romagnoli are kind of, again, the obvious go to youngsters in Italy, so I might want to steer away from them. Uh, someone that really intrigues me, actually, is uh, Matthias De Litt. He's had his potential up upgraded, and I think he has the potential to reach like the late 80s, and he's only 16 years old, so that could be a genuine option for us. You'll have to let me know. Of course, um, they did buy, Napoli, that is, did buy uh, Milik. Arkady Shamilik from Ajax this season. So uh, it's not necessarily unheard of for Napoli to pick a player from uh, the Eredivisie. With regards left back, uh, we have Antonio Barreca. We have Federico Mattiello, who looks quite tasty, although his, um, his physicals don't quite look that good. And Ser Klasnic actually was highly recommended. Every single year, he seems to be like a genuine option, and I've never really gone for it so maybe this year will be the year that we do I put back a Yoko on the list with regards to holding midfield role but I don't think I'm uh, looking for a holding midfielder at this particular moment in time with regards to wide midfielders on the right uh, Riyad Mahrez was a popular option uh, although again considering he had a great series a uh, great season last year bit of an obvious signing although maybe considering he's not been so good for the majority of this season already and we are quite deep into the season at the beginning of FIFA 17 he was an obvious option but now maybe not so much but you might have seen him in a number of series up to this point so it might be nice to sign someone different uh Federico Bernadeschi is also at an option in Serie A an Italian right side in midfielder I think I signed him at AC Milan on FIFA 16 I'm not sure you might have to correct me if I'm wrong but I think I did so I might steer away from him because I've used him previously, but then again, he might be one of the better options we have at our disposal. Uh, Christian Pulisic is obviously uh, coming into the fall now at Borussia Dortmund and making a name for himself, although Usman Dembele is also doing the same at Borussia Dortmund. Bernardo Silva in real life has had a fantastic season so far for uh, AS Monaco and will continue to do so, I would have thought. Uh, Federico Chiesa is an option on the right-hand side. He was very popular with you guys in the comments section. Then on the left-hand side... We have Kennedy, obviously at Chelsea, could play left mid, could play left wing, could be utilised at left back if needs be. Thomas Lamar has also had a very good season at Monaco. And uh, Vincenzo Grifo is an Italian national that's currently playing in, actually, I think the Freiburg are in the, the second division, aren't they, in Germany, I think. Uh, a couple of cam options that were offered to me, like Giovanni Lo Celso and Amato Cicciaretti, but I don't know too much about these guys at all, but... I was just curious to see what they were all about. I'll, I'll scout them and see what happens. Gianluca Caprari was another player that I know nothing about. He's currently on loan at Pescara from uh, Inter Milan. So we'll have to wait and see what his uh, his stats look like. But another potential option, although, I don't know, he's 22. I mean, we'll have to wait and see what I, our scout youth scouts come up with as well, of course. It might be nice to, uh, to bring some youth talent in, although if this is primarily going to be, or the idea is for this to be a shorter series, so we might not get the opportunity to... Uh, bleed through a number of youngsters, but we might be able to bring through a couple. Uh, Domenico Berardi is the standout option on the right-hand side of midfield, but similarly with Gianluigi Donnarumma, again, extremely popular, extremely overused, and it might be nice to try someone different, although I would sign him if we run out of options. Matteo Politano was highly recommended, another right-sided winger at Sassuolo. I don't know anything about him, though, so we'll have to wait and see what he looks like. Uh, David Neres, another youngster, out, uh, I think he's Brazilian actually, and he's at uh, Ajax as well. Yeah, can play on either side of midfield, four star uh, skills as well. And uh, Rashid Gazal is at Leon. I don't know anything about him, but he came highly recommended as well. And then there's a couple of left sided uh, wingers. Marco Piaca uh, looks like, well, he's got a man in the match card. I'm not my team that looks pretty decent, so uh, I would presume on career mode he'll be okay. Uh, Balde Cater, of course, has been a, a go to. I haven't got Felipe Anderson on the list or anyone like. Um, Mo Salah or anyone like that just because, well, I don't think Mo Salah would leave Roma to come to Napoli anyway. Uh, but this guy intrigued me. Uh, Ladislav Krejci, he's at Bologna and he's not got that high a level of strength but at 24, 
if those stats are towards the upper ending, upper end of those estimations, he could actually be pretty decent. Because of course, bear in mind we already have my starting wingers in place. So whoever comes in would be back up first season with the um, idea to bleed them into the squad once Jose Kayahani either gets sold on or his stats start to drop as he gets older. So uh, Crazy could be a genuine option to grow into that position or, you know, Piak or anyone else that we've mentioned. And at striker, at present, like we say, we're going to use Dries Mertens at striker. We do have Arkadisha Milik. Uh, we do have uh, Pavoletti as well, but I'm not keen on him. And he's new at the club, so I can't sell him on now, but I could sell him in January. So we might wait until January before making a decision with striker and concentrate on the wide area, both in midfield and in defence and at goalkeeper. And then maybe readdress the striker situation in January if we can move on, Pavoletti. But Giovanni Simeone was recommended by you guys. Don't know anything about him currently at Genoa. We'll have to wait and see what happens there. Andrea Bellotti, of course, has had an upgrade and uh, he looks pretty handy, to be completely honest. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. And there were a couple of calls to bring Edinson Cavani back to Navani. Back to Navani. <laughs> back to Napoli. Um, I'm not too sure about that. Obviously, he's 29 years of age and his stats will start to drop. So I, I don't know whether I would look to bring Edinson Cavani back. And uh, there were a couple of calls for Levetsi, but obviously he's moved to the Chinese league, so I couldn't sign Levetsi anyway because he's not in the game anymore. So I'm unfortunately not able to sign uh, Ezequiel Levetsi either. But... They are the options I have on my list at present. If there are any that you've suggested so far that aren't there from the first couple of episodes, then it's probably because either A, I didn't think that they would do the uh, the series any good, or I just wasn't that keen on them. And uh, B, you know, some a lot of people suggested players in midfield, and obviously I'm not looking for players in midfield. And at centre-back, we're not really looking for centre-backs at present either. We're looking elsewhere. But I will list uh, the goalkeepers onto the transfer list. And we will, uh, not Reina, Raphael. We'll list Raphael to the transfer list and we'll do the same with Luigi Seppe. With regards to centre-backs, like we say, we've still got Sirius. Uh, Luperto's out on loan. He could grow well. We've still got Tonelli as well. He's 79 rated at 26 years of age. So centre-back, we really don't need to worry about that right now. Uh, I would contemplate selling Strinitz. So I'll add him to the transfer list and... I would contemplate selling Maggio as well, although he's not really worth much, so it might not be worth selling him on. Uh, in the other positions, there are a couple of youngsters that I did want to send out on loan, uh, if possible. I think I, in fact, I think the majority of them are already out on loan. Uh, Giaccarini, I'd be up, I'd be open for uh, loaning out because I can't sell him yet, but we might just keep him here for the time being. Uh, Zerban is on the loan list already. I think actually I must have already loaned or loan listed the players I wanted to uh, move on. And uh, indeed, I have. So we've added those players to the transfer list on top of the players that we've already added to the loan list. And uh, it's kind of a long intro to this one. I apologise, but we will go and play Arsenal now. We'll see if anything develops transfer-wise and then hopefully we can beat Arsenal. And we'll head into the first, or into the final, sorry. If not, we'll head towards the first uh, competitive games of the season, which are against Pescara and AC Milan. Of course, the, uh, the league season starts quite late in Italy. Uh, similarly to how it does in Spain as well. So uh, it, hopefully we can beat Arsenal and then we'll play the second game. Then we might have a very transfer-heavy episode tomorrow, not tomorrow, Thursday, and uh, and then we'll end the window on Saturday or Sunday. But for now, they are my thoughts on your suggestions. Thank you for them. Please do continue to leave me your suggestions. And if there's anyone on there in those particular positions that you think I should look at and isn't on that list, then do let me know. Uh, again, to reiterate the point, I am wearing that Napoli kit, but because of the saturation and the different colour uh, gradings I need to do to get the green screen to work, that's what means that the Napoli shirt changes to this kind of deep royal blue colour. Um, let's swap the team out a little bit. Uh, people, A couple of people were saying that they reckon Albiol isn't really worthwhile, but uh, or don't think he can cut it, but I actually think he can. Uh, as you know, let's, let's play Jorginho over, over Ham's... That's not exactly what I wanted to do. Well, actually, it kind of is, because we'll put Mertens out wide, and then I want to put uh, Akadisha Milik, Akadisha Milik uh, up top. So we'll do that. And then let's put Rog on the, tra on the transfer list, on the uh, bench, and uh, we'll leave it as as is. Yeah, go on, then we'll leave it as is. Right then, Arsenal in the semi-final to try and raise some more transfer money. As you may have noticed in the uh, Cambridge United episode earlier on today, where I accidentally left it on, I've got the Italian commentary on in the background now. 
as you can hear there. Uh, last year we did it for the AC Milan series and equally for a series we did in Spain I switched the commentary to Spanish in the My Player series when we moved so I'm going to try and keep that up this year. All my series so far with regards manager mode have all been in England so that's why we've only had English commentary but for this one now we're at Napoli we will uh, have it in Italian I'll just have to remember to switch it back to English for uh, for the Cambridge United Road to Glory series because obviously as you will have seen if you watched the video earlier on I accidentally left it on Italian and uh, we played three games of the of the Korean Road RTG with Italian commentary earlier on this afternoon I'm waiting to see what Arsenal's lineup looks like it's showing me mine in the in the group stage games of pre-season it doesn't give you the uh, the lineups but in the uh, knockout stages it does so I'm keen to see what uh, sort of side Arsenal were putting out because Chelsea and Leverkusen didn't start full strength sides. And that's not full strength with Yaya Sonogo up top. But it's still decent. Ertzel, Iwobi, Walcott, Elneny, Coquelin, Debussy, Koscielny, Gabriel, Gibbs, Czech. It's stronger than... It's probably the strongest team we've faced so far in this preseason. So we'll have to wait and see how we get on against it. Theo puts a foot in there. No foul given. Ertzel working some space into Yaya Sonogo. Good save down low by Reina. Yaya Sonogo has come the closest to scoring a goal in this game. And that surely can't be right. It looks like they're going to go short and play it to Iwobi there. And they are. Oh, is a cross going to come in from Iwobi? Oh, tripped over Walcott there. He just kind of like tried to get out of his way rather than just running through him and barging him out of the way. Iwobi on the ball again. Don't make a foul here. Otherwise, they'll get a Penches. Although, it would be nice if I could stop him from getting through. Oh, my word. The bar and the post. Wow. How have they not scored? Arsenal surely should be 1-0 up in this game. And note to self, don't throw it out to Insigne when he's got a man with him because he's not going to win any headers. Insigne out there to Goulam. Bit of a heavy touch. Insigne's kept his run going. We'll move central. The Uara. Zielinski on it. Jorginho, sorry, is there in support. Get this quickly forward out there to Hisai and then into Mertens. Try and spin the man. I felt like, or I feel like Mertens is much more involved in that central striker role. Although, as soon as I say that, Milik has run through and surely will win us a penalty. Lauren Koscielny, a rash challenge, a yellow card for him, and that had to be a spot kick. The first thing Mertens has done all game is tuck inside there and actually send that ball through for Milik. And to be fair, it's a great turn. And he's not the fastest, Arkadisha Milik, but clearly fast enough to fall, uh, to fall the defender. Who was it? Koscielny. Let's give the penalty to Milik. He won it. And to be fair, he's got the highest uh, penalty stats on the team. So let's put it top right. Well, medium right. Into the back of the net regardless. Milik, our new striker, makes it Napoli 1, Arsenal 0 after 39 minutes. Although how they didn't score earlier on, hitting the bar and post, I'm not entirely too sure. Debushi. Can I catch him on there? No, I overcommitted a little bit with Diawara there. And it's Matteo Debussy that puts it into the, well, I'd say into the stands, but uh, it's a running track around the outside. As it is in real life, I think the in-game stadium here is just a generic stadium, but the Sao Paulo that Napoli play at in real life does have a running track around it. So it is kind of realistic that this is the stadium that they give them in-game. Pepe Reina's made six saves so far, and check only the one, but... So far, he's checked that's conceded the goal. So it doesn't really matter too much as far as I'm concerned. Quite happy to be 1-0 up here as we head towards half-time against Arsenal. A strong Arsenal team as well. This has by no means been anywhere near as easy as the previous three games in pre-season. They were all very one-sided. But a stronger Arsenal team here has quite clearly, as you've seen, caused me problems throughout. He somehow wasn't able to clear that. Well, for a minute, Pepe Reina wasn't going to pick that up. But never mind, that'll be half-time, I would have thought, by the time I bowl this out. And indeed it is. Diwara. Nice ball into Insigne. Takes it in his stride well. Debussy is closing me down. Let's try a Berber spin to beat Debussy, which has worked very well indeed. We'll look to turn his side again. And that's gone well. And we'll poke it through. And, well, he slid Milik and got there, but unfortunately wasn't able to cause the keeper any problems. Diwara uh, into Zielinski, who's turned brilliantly. And I'll pull this back inside to Diwara, who dug that out bril brilliantly. I was going to say beautifully. Dug that out beautifully and brilliantly. And Petacek with a smart save. Lorenzo Insigne to take the free kick. And it comes. Up goes Milik and cleared away by Kieran Gibbs. Not sure whether that was on target or not. But, oh. Nice first touch by Goulam. Unfortunately, I've given that straight to Mesut Ertzel. But thankfully, he's given it straight to Diawara. So the danger is over for us, but not for them. And hit that early, Jorginho deflected. Let's have another corner. 
we will try our best to get this second goal that we're looking for. Tonelli's up. That's away, but deflected off Coquelin. Another corner. And Diwara's up this time. No, it's Koulibaly, but over the top of the bar. That's a great ball over the top. Koulibaly. So good. I love Koulibaly. Got him in the co-op career mode, of course, with Kiz at Liverpool. Uh, that series will return, by the way. It's not dead. It's just I haven't had the spare time with uh, moving house and some other commitments to uh, to have Kiz over to be able to record another episode. So that series will return. Don't worry. The co-op career mode will be back at some point, hopefully in the near future. I should be moving within the next two weeks. Going to Ikea. Well, as you see this, I'm probably at Ikea or on my way home from Ikea buying probably rather a large amount of furniture to uh, go into the new house. Oh, what an interception, but not enough for Arsenal. Napoli 1, Arsenal 0. We are through to the final of the pre-season tournament, although thanks in no small part to the woodwork and Pepe Reina. There's some good chances in that game. Adelaide beat Leverkusen as well. Adelaide United are just destroying in this pre-season tournament. We're going to be up against it to play against them. Wait and see if there's any transfer info. If not, we'll head towards the uh, the game against Adelaide, but... They're turning up. Adelaide are absolutely destroying in pre-season. Similarly to how we have been so far. Tournament prize money, another £3 million added to the transfer budget. Fantastic. See if we get any transfer offers in before this game against Adelaide. Two emails there, three emails there. My, oh, it's just contracts accepted from other from other people that needed it, I think. Uh, yeah, Zuniga accepted. Uh, scout report is in on Belotti already. That's good. Let's have a look. What do you look like, Belotti? Uh, 80 acceleration, 82 sprint speed, 85 strength, 84 stamina, 85 attack positioning, 86 finishing. Could be handy. He's 81 rated overall. Could grow still a little bit though. Like I say, we're not we're not going to go for a striker first. We'll look for other positions beforehand. But maybe in January we could use Pavoletti as make weight and actually pick him up a little bit cheaper. But let's head now into this second game of the episode. Into the final of the preseason tournament against... The giant killing Adelaide United. Zielinski back to Diawara. Go across there to Kayahon. Not involved against Arsenal, but clearly we didn't need him. Turns his head all nicely, actually. I tried to do a burger spin and then suddenly realised that he doesn't have four-star skills. And Gelakovic makes a great save to start things off here for Adelaide. Maybe if he's been making saves of... I don't know what that sort of technique was. Maybe if he's been making saves of that quality throughout pre-season so far... That's why Adelaide United find themselves in the uh, in the final itself. Beating Manchester City, beating Bayer Leverkusen, holding off, was it Villarreal and there was someone else in their group, I can't quite remember. Well, Arsenal, it must have been. Holding off Villarreal and Arsenal uh, to uh, get through to the next stage. So I'm not sure what to expect from this Adelaide United team. Despite the fact we've played Manchester City, Arsenal, Real Sociedad and Bayer Leverkusen, we might find this being the most difficult game so far. Is it Real Sociedad? I think we played Real Sociedad, didn't we? Was that another series? I can't remember. We've done so many seasons on career mode so far this year. I think it was Real Sociedad we played, wasn't it? I can't remember. Anyway, Shalinski with another turn and his second chance of the game, but this time blocked by a defender. Offensively, they don't seem that threatening, or at least in the opening 10 minutes. The guy played a pass to himself a moment ago, but clearly my attacking intents aren't necessarily as good as they could be either. Hamshik into Dries Mertens. I have Diwara set to stay back whilst attacking. And he only has medium attacking work rates. But you saw the way he was flying forward there from CDM. Seemingly, he's got high defensive work rates and medium attacking work rates. But he just does not care what his in-game instructions are. That might be costly at some point this season if he doesn't learn to actually listen to my instructions. And I might have to slightly alter the formation to try and get him to pay attention and maybe play two CDMs and one CM or two CMs and a CAM and switch the uh, formation around a, bit, a little bit to ensure that I don't get caught out defensively and that DOR actually has a, a central midfielder alongside him in the deepest central midfield role so that when he does decide to disappear like that, it doesn't cost us defensively. How that hasn't gone in, I don't know. Unbelievable. Off both posts and back out. Corner for Adelaide United. This is remarkable. 
The keeper is making great saves at one end. The defenders are throwing in blocks. And now they've started to come alive offensively as well. And it's only 25 minutes in. Cheerio. Cross in. I'd say cleared away by Shirishes, but that really wasn't away, was it? It was cleared up by Shirishes. La Roca with the turn, and he says, scores for Adelaide United. I cannot comprehend how good this Adelaide United side are. In the first game of pre-season, I said clearly the A-League in Australia isn't cut out to play against teams in Serie A when we battered Wellington Phoenix. Obviously, Wellington Phoenix are from New Zealand, but they play in the A-League. But... Adelaide United proving me wrong here. Beat Manchester City. Beat Bayer Leverkusen. Win their group. And now they're 1-0 up in the final here against Napoli. Scenes. Absolute scenes here in pre-season. I've got a task on my hands now. Win that header, please. Thank you, Vlad. Diawara right, helps it down there to Cajon. Dries Mertens backing in. Play on, mate, if you want. I mean, I'm only going to give it back to Dries Mertens here. Rather pointless, but never mind. All nicely sorted through to Marek Hamsik, who oh, scores a great goal. Yes, Marek, we are back in it. He scored a banger into the top corner in one of the previous games in the group stage. And now he's scored another one here in the final to get us back on level terms. A cross goal into that top corner. Keeper, no chance. 1-1. One, one. Let's go and get a winner. Don't want to have to rely on penalties. Corner for Adelaide. Two and a half minutes to go. Kim Jae Sung to take it. It's towards the edge of the box and Milik just heads it away. And there's nobody upfield. Who's going to win this foot race? Unfortunately, it's a substitute of theirs. So he's got full stamina as well. But we'll put him under pressure. Oh, but Alan just didn't look to put a foot in to sweep the ball away there, unfortunately. Kito in there to Morone, who's turned me well. Let's be careful here. Decent cross. Oh, Gulam! Nearly scored an own goal. Let's punt this out wide here. Hopefully it will beat the defenders. It has done. Kahon brings it down well. And we'll poke that there in front of Allen, who can draw this defender across and poke it there in front of Insigne. Can we win it in the last minute? Lorenzo Insigne turns his side and then gets tackled. It goes to the keeper. And presumably that means that we will be going to penalties here in the final of the preseason tournament. Unless, no, we are going to penalties. As the referee traps the ball between his legs, we're going to pens. Six shots for them, seven for me. Oh, penalties it is. They're up first. A little bit of a change in the run-up. He's going to go that way. Not the obvious first penalty. Let's go the same way with Milik we did in the last game. Very well tucked away in the bottom corner. Up steps uh, Kim Jae-sung for them. Is he going to try and dink it as well? No, he's just buried it in the back of the net. Okay, so it's 1-1 after... Well, no, actually, let me take my second penalty. It's 2-1 after two penalties each. They keep altering their run-up by one step every single time, and it's infuriating. Oh, penalty! He smacked that in. Kahon, I'm just going to put it down the middle. Oh, keeper nearly stayed there. We're in front still. 3-2 after three penalties each. Tirio is going to go left. No, he's not. He's going to tuck that home in the bottom right-hand corner. Very nicely done. Lorenzo Insigne. I'm going to try and do the same. Not quite as far in the corner, but still into the corner. Right, save this. Or if he misses this, really going to go for that run-up. A little bit of a Simone Zaza. And really, really tame. Pepe Reina wins us the pre-season tournament by saving the penalty. They miss one. We save another. We win 4-3 on pens. Although we probably could have won 5-3 if we'd have taken our extra one. But we didn't need to. So 4-3 is the win on penalties. Skip, please. Thank you. There we go. Right, let's jump back and see if there's anything has happened transfer-wise. Those two games were actually a lot more competitive than the two and uh, the three group stage ones. So uh, I'm actually not quite as optimistic as I was uh, after episode two about our prospects in the league and the Champions League this season. The three group stage games we breezed through. Those two were very difficult. Very difficult. Six emails. It's just scout reports coming back on players, but Krejci... Uh, 77 overall, 86 acceleration, 84 sprint speed, 81 jumping, decent agility and balance. Looks good on the ball as well. I might be interested in him. I might very well be interested in him, especially at only £8 million. Uh, Federico Bernardeschi, 81 rated. Better on the ball. But 
Like I say, I've used him last year, so I might want to use someone different. Belde Keita would be very good. Didn't realise he was six foot tall. Belde Keita actually would be very good. And this get report on Domenico Verardi. Oh, shock, he's incredible, just as we suspected. Kind of know everything there is to know about uh, Bernard, um, in Berardi. There we go, too many wingers. Uh, right, there we go. Another £3.8 million added to the transfer budget. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section on those players we have on the shortlist. Our transfer budget is now close to £60 million after upping it from £50 million. And uh, I could add a little bit more uh, into the wage budget. So 57 and a bit with 200000 there in the wage budget. Let me know what you think I should do in the next episode, which of course will be on Thursday. There's a schedule in the description so you can see when this series goes live. The next episode, depending on what you guys reckon I should do, and depending on how quickly we can get scout reports back, the next episode might just be solely transfers because we've got a full more than a month between now and the first game of the Serie A season. So we might have solely transfers on Thursday. We'll have to wait and see. But for now, that's going to bring today's episode to a close. Thank you very much for watching. Please do continue to leave your support on this series. I very much appreciate it. It's gone down extremely well so far. So hopefully that continues to be the case for the foreseeable future. And I will see you next time.